kill them. Just like the family over there, they're happy. That's not what your 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 brother or whoever he was. He didn't want me to like. Did you force your way into the house with a knife? That is very accurate. You have her duct taped and zip tied face down. You knew you were gonna kill her. You know, once you kick a dog enough times, they tend to bite back. And really, they just don't care anymore. <laughs> This is Kimberly Kessler, a murder suspect in Florida. Jordan Beard is Jolene Cummings' cousin. On May 12, 2018, Kessler stabbed and killed her co-worker Jolene Cummings with a pair of scissors inside Tangle's hair salon in Fernandina Beach, Florida. According to reports, Kessler drove Cummings' car to a parking lot and abandoned it. She also disposed of Cummings' body in a dumpster, which was never recovered. Kessler tried to evade the police by quitting her job and lying about her identity but she was eventually arrested and charged with first-degree murder and grand theft auto. Kessler pleaded not guilty and claimed she was insane. Kessler's mental health has also been in question. In the past, she was found not competent. Then in October 2020, a judge ruled she was competent and her trial date was set. Kessler continues a hunger strike and unsanitary behavior, such as putting her own feces on her face and on corrections officers. She also refused to cooperate with her lawyers and often disrupted the proceedings with outbursts and insults. Assistant public defender. Uh, she is completely undressed and has species smeared on the window. Um, it's probably not a bad idea. So we're on mute uh, anyway, so I can say whatever the f I want. We're not on mute. Oh, okay. She claimed a conflict of interest and repeatedly accused her public defender of being related to the victim. Jordan Beard is Johnson's nephew. Jordan Beard is Jolie's cousin. Jordan Beard is Johnson's nephew. Jordan Beard is Jolene Cummings' cousin. Jordan Beard is Jolene's cousin. In court, Kessler accused the judge of silencing her for years and sweeping the truth under the rug. Sure, I can stay up here and I'm going to say what I want, when I want, how I want, which mm -hmm. you silenced me really for years. You have silenced me for years. So let everyone know this is just the tip of the iceberg. Jordan Beard, public defender, is Jolene Cummings' cousin. Yeah, Along with his brother yeah. Josh, yeah. He swept it under the rug for three and a half years, along with her father, her stepdad, who runs the jail, who recently retired. He still comes in. During her competency trial, correctional officers revealed Kessler's troublesome behaviors in custody. On occasion, I've seen her smearing pieces on the windows. Her clothes off and went in the window and pressed her breast against the window. And threatened to break every bone in my body. Cummings' mother, Ann Johnson, believed Kessler was smart and trying to get an incompetency deal. Suspect really incompetent? Or is the suspect just very intelligent? She will be found competent. I arrest you. She will. She'll be found competent. She was found competent to stand trial after several evaluations by mental health experts. The trial began in November 2021, and Kessler was found guilty of first-degree murder. We the jury found the defendant guilty of first-degree murder as charged in the indictment. She faced a mandatory sentence of life in prison without parole. Kessler declined to be present in the courtroom when the verdict was read. I'm going to bring you and give you the opportunity to participate and listen to the verdict. Very Hughes. Pardon? No, thank you. All right. Do you want to go back downstairs? Yes. All right, fair enough. In an interview, Kessler's ex-husband described her as a crazy woman who loved to play mind games. She was crazy. I can tell you that. She was, I mean, I don't think I know a crazy woman, but she was, she was out there. I uh, see her mind games. In her victim impact statement, Anne became emotional, describing what the past years have been like without her daughter. We suffered the greatest nightmare of all, the murder of a beautiful soul that was taken from us. The only thing that keeps us together is faith. Nassau County Sheriff said that he believed this wasn't Kessler's first murder. I don't for one second believe that Kimberly Kessler, or whatever name she's going by today, I don't believe this is her first murder. I don't at all. She's evil. She's evil in the flesh. And as soon as she's sentenced, I want her behind out of our jail because we are fed up with her crap. 
Kessler's trials were filled with rage and loud outbursts, but the opposite can be said in the case of Tony Farmer. Finish off sort of a term of two years on that oh, count as well. A top recruited basketball player who is facing charges for aggravated assault in Ohio. According to reports, Farmer, once a top 100 ESPN recruit and a potential NBA prospect, was accused of kidnapping, robbery, and assaulting his ex-girlfriend, Andrea Lane. A surveillance video from 18-year-old Lane's apartment showed Farmer attacking her. He continued to strike and kick Lane while she cowered in a corner and pleaded for him to stop. But police said he dragged her outside by the hair and continued to assault her. And when Lane tried to get back to her apartment, he attacked her again, tried to pull her outside, and later kicked her in the head. Farmer pleaded guilty to all three charges and was sentenced to three years in jail. He collapsed in the courtroom when the verdict was being read out. Two years in prison on that count. As to count three of that case, the robbery, which is also a felony of the second degree, the court uh, orders that the defendant shall serve a term of two years on that oh, count as well. Oh, God. Oh, God. As family members wept in the background, Farmer's reaction became a viral meme on social media. Oh, I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished. In court, supporters of Farmer asked for lenient sentencing so that he could pursue his basketball career. Andrea Lane testified in Farmer's favor and requested the judge not to send him to prison. Um, I know he was a good person. I hope he still is. I hope he learns from this. The judge was not swayed by their requests because she thought the victim was traumatized by the whole situation. There's nothing in the sentencing guideline that talks about him being a basketball star and being able to go forward when uh, obviously I think she's been very traumatized by this whole situation. She also concluded that Tony Farmer was not remorseful after his initial arrest because he later attempted to intimidate the victim by sending her a series of texts and phone messages. He certainly threatened her or said that um, he should have done something more to her. And so uh, that, in addition to what I saw on the tape, was very telling to me. And it was a violation of the no contact order that was put in place to protect her. While fainting when hearing your sentence is rare, how does it compare to trying to escape from your sentence? This is Gregory Wright, a suspect in an armed robbery in Detroit, Michigan. As per reports, 22-year-old Wright robbed Gregory Gritson at gunpoint and escaped with his car. While fleeing from authorities, Wright slammed into a police cruiser and fired shots, hitting an officer in the arm. A day later, on June 29th, Wright was arrested. All I got to say is I have no remorse for shooting that police officer. He got what he deserved. If I had the opportunity to kill him, I'd kill him. If I had the opportunity to kill him, I'd kill him. And if a criminal could access and steal your digital files, they would too. This is where Surfshark, our sponsor for this video, can be a lifesaver. What if we told you that every second you're not using a VPN, criminals just like Gregory are trying to gain access to your digital files? Opportunity to kill him, I kill him. Surfshark is not just a VPN, it's your digital bodyguard. Surfshark encrypts your internet traffic, ensuring that your online activities remain private and secure. With Surfshark's clean web feature, you can browse the web without worrying about ads, trackers, or malware. Surfshark also lets you access geo-restricted content on streaming services like Netflix and YouTube, giving you the freedom to watch what you want, where you want. And the best part is there's no risk in trying Surfshark, as they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Plus, by using the promo code COURTROOM, you'll get an extra three months free. Visit the link at the top of the description to start protecting yourself from criminals like Gregory today. Now, in court, Gregory faces charges of armed robbery, carrying a concealed weapon, and use of a firearm during a felony. Wright was presented at court for a pretrial bond hearing. Judge Isetta Bright granted a bond of $50,000. Hearing this, Wright made a run for it. Seven officers finally managed to subdue Wright. After the scuffle, Judge Bright removed the bond and ordered Wright to remain in custody. The case eventually went to trial, and Wright was sentenced to life in prison. However, this wasn't the only time chaos swept the courtroom. 
like in the case of Manson Bryant, a robbery and abduction suspect in Ohio. Court determines that you have or will have the ability to pay restitution. The courtroom in 2018, Bryant was convicted by a jury of robbery, kidnapping, and weapons charges relating to an armed burglary of an occupied trailer home. According to reports, 35-year-old Bryant and a co-defendant were accused of crawling through the trailer's window and holding the resident at gunpoint while robbing him. At his sentence hearing in March 2019, Bryant appeared before Judge Eugene Lucci, who was a familiar face. This was the fourth time Bryant stood before Judge Lucci as a convicted felon, who said his crimes have been more and more violent over the years. The last time before this time that I had him, I put him in prison for four years for a robbery. He acted out briefly on his way out of the courtroom, and I just let it go. In court, Bryant was given a chance to speak on his behalf. I made a lifetime of bad decisions. Bryant said that many of his decisions were driven by drug addiction and that he wanted to stay clean. He also praised Lucci and the justice system as a whole. This is not how I want to finish my life. And despite the circumstances of my upbringing, I understand that I can't continue supporting others for my actions. I have a newfound respect for the efforts of the attorneys, judges, juries. Bryant pleaded with Lucci for an opportunity to still make something out of his life. And all I ask is for you to give me a mean opportunity to still make something out of my life. Lucci sentenced Bryant to 22 years in prison. That was significantly more than the 12-year sentence that Bryant's co-defendant received. Bryant wasn't happy about that, and he let Lucci know. The court sentences you to prison for a total of 22 years the ability to pay restitution. The courtroom, you racist shit. Your courtroom, man. You racist as fuck. Twenty-two years. Racist. You ain't. Wait a minute. You never gave me a chance. When I said that you had a certain amount of remorse, I was mistaken. Twenty-eight years with credit for two hundred and thirty-one days. Lucci ultimately sentenced Bryant to 28 years behind bars, up from the 22 years he had originally indicated, linking the additional six years directly to his belief that Bryant was not, in fact, remorseful. Well, it was clear that the remorse that he was trying to portray was phony and that he wasn't remorseful at all and that if given the chance, if I let him loose on society, he's going to prey on other people. Bryant's case attracted national attention and sparked a debate about the role of free speech and judicial discretion in sentencing. But how does it compare to attacking your lawyer in court? You went off on your attorney, Taylor. You went crazy on your attorney. This is Taylor Shabiznis, a murder suspect in Wisconsin. As per reports, 25-year-old Shabiznis killed and mutilated Shad Therion in a drug-fueled intimate act. 24-year-old Shad was strangled with a metal chain, and his dismembered body was found in his mother's basement. Shabiznis left his severed head in a bucket, and other body parts in a storage tote, plastic bags, and cardboard boxes. There was remains, uh, two different specific types of remains that I, that I observed. Okay. Um, there was a human head, uh, there was genitalia, in the bucket. Shad's mother was the first to discover her son's remains. You kind of uh, came upon the bucket, it happenstance kind of, right? Right. So then you took the towel off? I did. Shabiznis later admitted that killing Shad wasn't the only thing she did to him. I grinded on and I put the in there. I, I, you grinded on? Yeah. And did you ever put his in your in your you on him? So when did you start, you know, cutting up his body? I don't know, like almost right away. I was and cutting at the same time. She was arrested and charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilation of a corpse, and third-degree sexual assault. During a court appearance, Shabiznis shockingly attacked her lawyer. She had to be pacified by two court officers. 
You went off on your attorney, Taylor. You went crazy on your attorney. Given her actions in court, Shabiznis was seen wearing a spit hood in her next appearance. Shad's uncle Kelly Therion slammed Shabiznis, telling her there's no excuse for her cowardly actions. If you take the path to go get the help, you wouldn't be in this situation right now. None of us would be in this situation. But to take the cowardly path that you did and to make other people suffer because you are suffering is pretty Kelly said he wished death in prison for Shabiznis and hoped she'd meet the same fate as her idol, Jeffrey Dahmer. I will pray that you meet the same fate as your idolistic Jeffrey Dahmer. So have a good luck, business. Michael Therian, Shad's father, said he forgave Shabiznis for what she did to his son and hoped she would use her time in prison to become a better person. Taylor, I just wanted to say that uh, I forgive you for what you've done to my son and... Uh, yeah, you made a bad choice, and now you have to live with it. Uh, he asked Judge Thomas Walsh to allow her to see the streets soon. And I'm going to ask the judge if he can, you know, if she can see the streets again sometime, you know. It, it may not be soon, but I believe I believe everybody uh, makes bad choices, and maybe not to the scale, but uh, I think there's a lot of hope for you. Judge Walsh said that this crime offends human decency. This crime offends human decency. It offends human dignity, and it offends the human community. It really does. Taylor Shabiznis was later found guilty on all counts and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The decision of this court and the judgment of the law uh, that Ms. Shabiznis be, be sentenced as follows. Count one, that's the first degree intentional homicide as a repeater. It's a class A felony. A life imprisonment without the, without the possibility of extended supervision. Taylor Shabiznis' trial was filled with blood-chilling moments, but how does it compare to taking your own life in court? This is Michael Marin, an ex-Wall Street trader who was accused of arson in Arizona. In 2008, Marin bought a $3.5 million mansion, but could not afford the mortgage payments and tried to sell it at a charity auction. When no one bid on his house, he set it on fire. Sam, what's your emergency? Yeah, my house is on fire. Are you going to be able to get out? I've got one of those ladders. Uh, you have a ladder where? I'd, I'd rather work on that than talk to you, so let me let me get out of the hell out of here. Marin escaped using a rope ladder and scuba gear. He relived the escape from his hospital bed. I realized that I actually had some air left in that tank, and that's what enabled me to get back to the window and deploy that ladder. If I hadn't had those two things, we wouldn't be talking. Phoenix Fire Department investigator Jeff Peabody believed Marin intentionally set fire to his house. Marin was arrested and found guilty of arson. He was sentenced to 21 years in prison. You find the defendant, Michael James Mayer, guilty of arson of an occupied structure. As the verdict was read, Marin seemed to put something in his mouth. He then started having seizures and ultimately collapsed in court. No, no, no. <laughs> Marin was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. An autopsy confirmed that Marin had ingested cyanide. Investigators also found a canister labeled as cyanide in his car. They also found a delayed email from Marin to his son with details about his will and his car. Marin's death caught live on camera was truly a shocking courtroom moment. But how does it compare to the antics of a cold-blooded murderer? This is Scott Nelson, a murder and kidnapping suspect in Orlando, Florida. I am a homicidal maniac. He lit a firecracker. He, f he lit a bomb. 55-year-old Scott Nelson, an ex-convict, decided to rob a wealthy homeowner in Winter Park, Florida. I wasn't particularly uh, happy with this. Sure. See, these, these people in, in uh, Winter Park, for instance, right, they have everything but they have beautiful homes and beautiful yeah. cars and golf courses. Now walking down the street while all these rich people are walking around buying jewelry and they're having their good life and all this stuff and wouldn't give a rat's about me. According to reports, Nelson broke into the house on September 27th, 2017 and encountered Jennifer Fulford, the nanny of the homeowner's children. Jennifer's employer found her missing and called 911. I'm a Winter Park resident and um, uh, my, my nanny is missing. This is what's unusual is her purse is here. Okay. Her car's gone, her purse is here, and nobody's heard anything from her. 
since 11. Nelson kidnapped Fulford at gunpoint, then bound her with zip ties and duct tape, which he bought from a store. Later, he drove Fulford to an ATM to withdraw money from her account. He then took her to a vacant lot, stabbed her multiple times in the chest and back, and left her body there. In court, Nelson blamed the society and the government for his actions. You know, once you kick a dog enough times, they tend to bite back. And really, they just don't care anymore. Tell us about your plan. My plan was to get some money. He, f he lit a bomb. He knew it too. And they laugh about it after. That's what corrections does. That's what the government does. That's all they've ever done to me. They've turned me into an animal. Nelson went on to chillingly describe his crime. Who killed Jennifer Fulford? I did. Did she appear to you to be terrified? I'm sure she wasn't happy. You, well, you've had a knife this whole time, right? I think I left it in the vehicle, and then I had to go back and get it, I guess. Should I have dropped her off in front of OPD? He also admitted to kidnapping and murdering Fulford. To leave her there, not to kill her, to leave her there. Why did you bind her hands behind her back? I would imagine so that she couldn't leave. Why did you wrap it so tightly that she couldn't breathe? I didn't do it that tightly. He continued to say that the cops did a poor job of catching him. Rather, he gave himself up. I mean, did I make it easy enough? It wasn't great police work that got me here. I gave it all to you. In the penalty phase, Nelson asked the jury to sentence him to death, saying he was a lost cause. He also said he wanted to die so he could sue Rexford and the federal government in the afterlife. I am a homicidal maniac. Mr. Nelson, do you want to be sentenced to death? Yes. The jury recommended life in prison without parole for Nelson citing his history of abuse, mental illness, and brain injuries as mitigating factors. The judge agreed and sentenced him to life in prison. Nelson's cold and calm confessions of his crimes were truly a viral courtroom moment. But how does it compare to this dramatic courtroom outburst that brought out several deputies and a taser threat? This is Curtis Travis, a murder suspect in Fresno, California. Come on, I'm sitting in prison for the rest of my life for some According to reports, 35-year-old Curtis Travis committed an armed robbery with an accomplice, stole a pickup truck, and crashed into another vehicle, killing its driver. During his sentencing hearing, Travis caused disturbances in the courtroom. Please, take me out of here. Please, take me out of here, like I have. He lashed out at the judge, claiming he was in the passenger seat at the time of the crash. The blood showed that I was in the passenger seat. Do you understand that? I understand. Evidence! I understand your argument, sir. Yeah. And it's not convincing. After that, Travis turned his attention towards his attorney and accused him of setting him up. He then turned his outburst towards the victim's family, and that's when deputies stepped in to intervene. Just like the family over there, they're happy. That's not what your 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 brother or whoever he was, he didn't want me to life. Stop it. Travis's mother apologized in court on his behalf while her son sobbed in the background. She told the court that her son was not a monster, but a pathological liar who never intended to kill. He didn't go out and take a gun and shoot somebody. I mean, it wasn't like he did it on purpose. So I just apologize and I'm sorry for, for everything that's all said. Travis eventually was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Punishment for that crime is and should be life without the possibility of parole. Travis's bizarre outburst was truly a viral courtroom moment, but how does it compare to abusing the judge and the district attorney in court? Use a I'm a tough guy now. You, no, use a But I think use a and you'll be a This is Michael Gaines, who assaulted a police officer in Wichita, Kansas. According to reports, Gaines spat on detectives who were trying to break up his fight with another prison inmate. Gaines was convicted of two counts of battery of a law enforcement officer. In court, the judge spoke to Gaines about his action when suddenly he snapped back. All the evidence shows that you deliberately. Yeah, okay. Yeah, words, yeah, yeah, yeah. The you words did. were that you deliberately were hawking up saliva. Bullsh. I didn't hawk up no saliva, okay? That's bullsh. And you're going to believe those lies. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't hawk up no saliva. You're going to believe a lie because they were in uniform. The judge tried to pacify Gaines but it was just the start of an explosive outburst. Me, it's I'm like eager. You ain't got to scream at me. You're, oh. You're going to raise your voice at me? Oh my God. You raise your voice to me, I raise my voice to you. Gaines kept his worst for the assistant district attorney who bore the brunt of his outburst. I appreciate Mr. Gaines making my point for 
You punk. Very well received. Maggot mother. And I don't, I don't think I have to take insults from you. I know. Words. You. You. Uh, use the. Use the. He's a tough guy now. You. You use the. But I think. Use the. And you'll be a. After I get sentenced, punk. I think Mr. Gaines has forfeited. You. And he's put his I'm ready to go. I was ready to I'm go. I, I, you punk. The judge stepped in and asked security to take Gaines away. However, Gaines still had some things left to say. I'll take the you. Take the out of the courtroom. He's a maggot. Yeah, you're a tough guy. He's a maggot, punk. <laughs> you should have died when you was a baby. Yeah. Mother maggot. Anytime, Mr. Gaines. Shut up, punk. Gaines was given an increased sentence of 162 months in prison for his outburst. Gaines' vicious outburst was a viral courtroom moment. Now, let's look at another profane outburst by a convict in court. This is Alto Miles, who was accused of multiple murders in Avondale, Cincinnati. According to reports, in April 2020, Miles killed four people over 24 hours across two separate shooting scenes. The four victims were William Bowen III, 28, Michael Eaves, 47, Bridget Carter, 56, and Tasia Mason, 35. Mason was Miles' former girlfriend. That woman and the other female victim were together at their residence, uh, provoking him uh, with jealousy by talking about photographs of other men on Facebook and that he had finally gotten fed up, they had gone too far, and he shot and killed the two of them. Then prosecutor Joe Detters sought the death penalty for Miles. Detters said that after Miles was arrested, he told investigators he would have continued killing had they not stopped him. Upon arrest, told the investigators that had they not stopped him, he would have continued to kill. In September 2023, a judge ruled that Miles would no longer face the death penalty after a doctor confirmed that he was suffering from schizoaffective disorder during the time of the murders. During his plea hearing, Miles appeared in court with his mouth covered with a spit mask. While Miles' attorney was entering a new plea, Miles yelled out at his lawyer in the courtroom. Counts one, two, three, and four, along with oh, give me the f out of gun specifications for each one of those counts. Your gun specifications. Shut up, my name. Miles continued to rant about shooting and stabbing people in the head while his attorney attempted to quieten him. After the plea agreement was read, Miles would not verbally agree to it, despite signing it. Instead, he began yelling at Judge Christopher A. Wagner, before Wagner asked him one last time if he'd like to plead guilty. So Miles, I'm going to ask this question again. Did he hit the mother motion? Your last chance, Mr. Miles. Do you wish to plead guilty to these four counts of aggravated murder? Miles then letting out a chilling, sinister laugh while continuing his profanity laced rant. His attorney tried one last time to attempt to convince Miles, but he continued with his outburst. Judge Wagner said that Miles could not knowingly and voluntarily plead guilty to the charges he's been indicted with. Miles was sent back to jail and the hearing was rescheduled. Miles cannot knowingly and voluntarily plead guilty to the charges he's been indicted with. This matter will be reset. Thank you. Miles' agitated rant was truly a shocking courtroom moment. But how does it compare to the chaos when two convicts collapse in court simultaneously? Oh, no. 
This is Shanita Latrice Cunningham and Erica May Butts, both murder suspects in South Carolina. According to reports, Cunningham and her girlfriend Mutz beat to death three-year-old Serenity Richardson. Serenity was visiting Butts, her godmother and her mother's best friend, and Cunningham at their home in Somerville. Butts said that she whipped Serenity with a belt because she urinated on the floor. Serenity suffered from more than 250 injuries, including a lacerated liver, broken ribs, and a fractured skull. She died from blunt force trauma to the head. During the trial, Deidre Richardson said nothing had ever affected her as strongly as the photos of the little girl's battered body. The severity of the blow to that child's leg and to say that you did not recognize what had been done, to ignore what must have been the excruciating sounds that came from that child on a daily basis is more than disconcerting to this court. Butts and Cunningham were found guilty of homicide by child abuse sentenced to life in prison without parole. And as such, the court finds it appropriate that each be sentenced to the State Department of Corrections for a period of life. You will get credit for any of the time that you've... After hearing the verdict, Butts and Cunningham collapsed to the floor as the screams of their family members pierced the courtroom. The two women started hyperventilating and had to be restrained and wheeled out of the courtroom. Butts and Cunningham's bizarre and chaotic collapse in court was truly a viral courtroom moment. But how does it compare to throwing your feces and urine in court? This is Ricky Hand, who's facing multiple charges of robbery in Ohio. Ricky attempted to rob John's drive through but failed as the owner was armed and fired shots at him, hitting him in the arm. The owner then called 911. 911 emergency. Yeah, this is John's drive through West Main Street. A uh, guy just tried to rob me and I shot him. He ran out the back door. Okay, is he injured? I think I hit him. Ricky was arrested from a nearby hospital. And during interrogation, he confessed to a series of robberies. There have been probably a half a dozen or more robberies. Now you're looking at John's, you're looking at this break into this beauty salon. Oh, the beauty salon's a bonus because I didn't even know anything about that, and you told me that. I'm going to prison for a long time. Well, you know that. When the case took to the courtroom, Ricky was found guilty of multiple armed robberies and sentenced to 40 years in prison. Ricky was clearly expecting a lesser sentence, and what he did next shocked the entire courtroom. You just gave him 40 years. Well, guess what? Sir, Ricky had hidden pill bottles filled with feces and urine in his arm sling. He then proceeded to fling them at his own lawyer before being detained by court officers. Due to his antics, Ricky faced additional charges of harassment with bodily fluids, obstructing justice, and retaliation. Investigators were stumped with the breach and wondered how Ricky got past security with the fluids. Our policy dictates that there's a search prior to and a search after he leaves, and that was very apparently not done. Ricky's disgusting action certainly proved to be a viral courtroom moment, but how does it compare to being thrown out of court twice? I hope you fall on that baby's head. This is Alan McCarty, who was charged with making death threats to a judge in Daytona Beach, Florida. 
Fire raise your right hand. I'm going to swear you in. I'm not under oath. According to reports, McCarty called the sheriff's office and made threats to a judge whom he mistakenly believed took his children away in a child custody case. Yeah, I want to report a crime that's about to happen. What do you mean a crime that's about to happen? Yeah, there's about to be a crime that's going to happen if my kids don't come back to me, you stupid Because your stupid judges don't want to bring people to courtrooms. I got a gun pointed at your building. Sir, what is going on? Who the f you calling, sir, you stupid Where's your judge warrant at? You going to bring that f out in handcuffs and I'm going to execute that son of a b in the street. I'm letting you know I'm going to shoot this b You got to give me my kids. Where are you at, sir? I just told you I'm outside of her building waiting for her to get there in the morning. I'm going to pop a cap in that bitch. You stupid. Detectives identified the caller and arrested McCarty. McCarty spent every moment in court with profanity-filled rants. He accused the court of denying him constitutional rights. I am not under oath. This is being done unconstitutionally. If y'all took my kids unrightfully, you won't allow my witnesses here. You won't allow my paperwork. Y'all took all my court paperwork. And when, when they all come in here, I'm going to say the same thing. So let's bring it. McCarty called Judge Matt Foxman a liar and tried to stop court proceedings. You're, you're a liar. Thank you very much, sir. Um, that being said, um, we're uh, ready to go ahead and proceed with that. Uh, no, we are not. McCarty then started mocking Judge Foxman and wrongly accused him of taking his kids from him. Um, my daddy owns the building and I look like a idiot, huh? Brought your dress today, you little prick. You want to take my kids from me and act like that? Man, that bitch. Judge Foxman finally had enough and shifted McCarty to a separate room. Take all my paperwork so you, I can't show these people. You want to take all my paperwork from me? Lock me in a cell f***ing all night? Despite that, McCarty's outburst could be heard from the other room. McCarty's chosen to voluntarily absent himself as opposed to the other. Sorry, we got to deal with it first. I've chosen that room as opposed to duct tape. You tell him to do this stuff. He can watch and hear what we're doing. In another hearing, Judge Foxman warned McCarty with the use of duct tape if he did not keep quiet in court. I'm going to tell you to be quiet. You need to be quiet. There's not going to be a second time. If there's a second time, I'm going to duct tape. I, I'm going to tell you, you just threatened my life to duct tape. Did everybody just hear that? You just threatened to duct tape me? Really? In the courtroom, a judge just threatened to duct tape. No, I said, oh, you oh. just said, on record, you're going to duct tape. How about this? Let's talk about the record. I said I'm going to warn you once. No, you said duct tape. Yes, warn you once. That's so you're, gonna you're admitting to, warn. to duct tape. Yeah, you want to know why? Because I want to protect your rights. Because my other right. option is to put you in another room. During his sentencing hearing, McCarty continued with his usual courtroom behavior and was once again removed to the back room by Judge Foxman. No, no, I refuse. I refuse. He threatened to duct tape me. He threatened to duct tape me. I refuse. I didn't threaten to Yes, you me. did. You admitted it on the on, on thing. I, I sca I'm scared. I said if you don't behave. Then you're going to duct tape me. I'm scared. The judge threatened my life. You have a I'm scared. I want to be removed. If, if you don't I would like to be removed from this room. You the judge threatened my life and I want to press charges. You have a constitutional right. I have a constitutional right, right to press it. charges and you threatened my you life. Uh, right la, 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 la. I want to be removed, removed from this room. You threatened my life. Yes, I want to be removed. I am in fear of you right now and I want to be removed. See it. I want to be removed. Thank you. See you on Thursday for your trial. Stupid piece of then I'll You threatened my life, you fing n. You, you fing n. Back room. Suck my dick. No, I'm not standing. Stop up. resisting. I'm not resisting. I'm just not Stand up. I'm not standing. I don't have to stand. You fing I hope you fing fall on that baby's fing head, you stupid fing n. Never threaten that fing bitch. Bring the play back to shit, you stupid motherfucker. McCarty was sentenced to 20 years in prison. He faced no additional charges for his courtroom behavior. 
McCarty's insane behavior was truly a viral courtroom moment. But how does it compare to completely breaking down in court? Charge the individual with the down over four general sessions for more charges. This is Jacob Morgan, who, at 17 years old, was found guilty of a house fire that killed a family member in Rock Hill, South Carolina. A child when he could have, and not having started the fires in the first place. He has to take responsibility. Morgan was left alone to look after his 14-month-old stepbrother. Reportedly, prosecutors said that Morgan intentionally set the fire that killed his family member. During a probable cause hearing, the judge ruled not in favor of Morgan. So therefore, I am going to find that there is probable cause to charge the individual with the down over four general sessions for the way Morgan entered a plea deal where he pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter and unlawful neglect of a child. However, he stated that he loved his brother and he always maintained his innocence. I love my brother. I still do to this very day. He's my best friend. To kill him would be killing a piece of myself. And I just wish I could have gotten to him in time. Morgan was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but after serving only seven years, he reportedly was released. Jacob Morgan's case is one of the most tragic courtroom moments. But how does it compare to a judge chasing after suspects? Like in the case of Tanner Jacobson and Cody Howard, who were facing 30 days in jail for driving on suspended licenses when they decided to bolt from a Washington state courtroom in handcuffs and prison sandals. As soon as the two suspects ran, Judge Buzzard sprang into action and ran after them. Outside the courtroom, the prison shoes got the better of Howard as he tripped and fell. Judge Buzzard followed the two suspects down the flight of stairs and caught up with Howard just as he was about to escape. Jacobson fled on foot for a few blocks before his sensibilities overcame his adrenaline-charged mind, and he was caught and brought back. Cody Howard, initially facing a 30-day jail term for driving on a suspended license, ended up with a six-year prison sentence due to a moment of insanity. I would be out of here if I wouldn't have ran. In contrast, Jacobson received a year and a day behind bars. There's nothing I could do now. I'm, I'm screwed. Howard and Jacobson's moment of insanity was truly a viral courtroom moment. But how does it compare to hailing Hitler in court? This is Frazier Cross, a white supremacist accused of murdering three people in Kansas. Ah. Cross, a former member of the Ku Klux Klan, shot and killed three people at Jewish sites in Overland Park. As per reports, his victims were 69-year-old William Corporan, his 14-year-old grandson, Reet Underwood, as well as 53-year-old Terry Lamano. Cross was arrested shortly after the shootings, and one of the officers captured this body cam footage. In court, Cross admitted that he shot the victims because he thought they were Jews. They were not. But I do apologize for those who died. And I did not, I thought they were Jews. I thought they were Jews. I wouldn't have shot them otherwise. The prosecutor said that Cross's actions were proud and remorseless, to which Cross, who was representing himself, replied religiously. Decide the fate of a man whom the evidence shows to be a proud and remorseless killer who regrets only that he did not kill more people. If there is a God up there, God, you know that what I did and what's in my heart is righteous, is honorable, and moral, and therefore, God, you will reward me. Cross called his son to the stand, where he said that Cross was a good father and took care of the family, but their beliefs did not match in any way. What kind of daddy you had? I think, uh, for the most part, I had a good father. I think he took care of his family. Except for his belief system, which I, nobody in our family really agreed with him so much on that. Cross was found guilty of one count of capital murder, three counts of attempted murder, and assault and weapons charges. He was sentenced to death by lethal injection. You will be 
transported to the Kansas Department of Corrections to carry out the sentence of death by lethal injection as provided by Kansas law. One day, my spirit will rise from my grave, and you all know that I will. Cross's anti-Semitic rants in this day and age were truly a shocking courtroom moment. But how does it compare to twerking in front of a judge? This is Calvin Lloyd Griffith, a suspect of stealing a car from a high school in Miami. As per reports, 30-year-old Griffith broke into a local school and stole an employee's car. He was arrested and charged with grand theft, burglary, and trespassing. Griffith appeared in bond court before Miami-Dade judge Catherine Pooler. Griffith, already on probation, was talking over everyone. Calvin Lloyd Griffin Jr. on page 12. Mr. Griffin is charged with burglary, petty theft, grand theft of a vehicle, and trespass. And he's on probation. He's out on probation, Yana. Yeah, I'm on probation. I'm on paper. Okay. Off of being here anyway, because I smoke. So court officials cut his mic out. You're Calvin Griffin? Mr. Snyder has the button for us. Oh, okay. As Judge Pooler looked over the paperwork, Griffith continued to try to get the attention of the judge. Yes. Oh, okay. When that didn't work, Griffith took a different approach. To everyone's surprise, he started twerking. Okay, let's see. <laughs> <Your Honor. laughs> well, he's got problems. A less than impressed Judge Pooler set Griffith's bond at $18,500. He was also ordered to stay away from Miami Edison Senior High. Set Griffith's and bond at $18,500. He was also ordered to stay away from Miami Edison, Senior, Edison Senior, Senior High. You're not a student anymore. Griffith's from dancing Miami antics Edison were truly high. a viral corporate moment. You should get out. Do but not how does it go compare back there. to a daring a drug escape attempt from court? This is Daniel Nicholson, who was charged with carrying an offensive weapon and possessing a prohibited weapon in Adelaide, Australia. Nicholson had a lengthy criminal history and was on bail, so the judge decided to revoke his bail. I revoke bail. I revoke bail. bail. No. Nicholson protested in disbelief, but the judge refused to listen to him. What's going on, Take a seat. Take a seat. Miss, please, miss. Please, miss. I'll tell you what, please, miss. Oh, no, no. That's when Nicholson, who was high on drugs, made a daring attempt to escape. <laughs> Officers eventually restrained him with cuffs. Later, Nicholson pleaded guilty to the incident, 